you guys welcome back to the channel i am stoked to be going through what i'm doing today because i just got my first ever bear uh, just uh two days before the end of the season i uh got my first bear and so i just wanted to go through the process with you guys and uh and uh, show you what i'm doing with it got a cooler full of bear meat there and uh show you guys my area here this is my workout area that i train for hunting and my storage over there and i got myself a nice uh, stainless steel table i uh, got this a couple years ago uh, when i got my uh, moose i had uh, drew my idaho once a lifetime idaho bull moose tag a few years ago and got this table to process i processed all the meat myself all the like one front quarter or something like that i gave to my brother and the rest of it i processed myself and we get to use it again today and all this bear goodness got good size cooler full of meat there and i think i'm gonna do like half uh snack sticks half uh, ground meat. Um, lots, lots of people do things like uh, um, some uh, breakfast sausage and jerky. Maybe I'll do some jerky too. We'll see. But uh, yeah, a lot of people do like stew meat and uh, save a few of the rounds for some um, for some uh, pot roast and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I think the snack stick will be awesome because I'll use that a lot. Uh, we'll use uh, ground meat a lot for our dinners and stuff for the family and burgers and whatnot. So I think that will be good to fill the old freezer over there. So yeah, I'll insert some pictures here for you guys of my bear. Uh, didn't get any footage for you guys. Uh, it was just kind of quick spur of the moment hunting trip. So <laughs> wasn't planning on filming and, and uh, yeah. I did a lot of bear baiting this season and had some trouble uh, with some mechanical issues with my truck and really only allowed me to get hunt over my stand twice and it was a new new stand spot. Um, I wanted to get up to a different spot uh, but, but the snow levels didn't allow me that so I tried a different spot last year uh, and the spot I tried was only um, only had uh, sow and cub show up. Uh, this spot, I had some decent bears show up, but yeah, like, because of some issues on there, I couldn't get real consistent with it. And uh, also I had a hard time, uh, it was a thick, thick bottom, um, kind of a bench area, kind of midway up a mountain. And I had trouble with the thermals and stuff, finding a good way to hunt it. There wasn't really a, a ton of trees where I could hang a, a good stand or anything like that. Uh, I have a climbing tree stand and a uh, hang on tree stand, but uh, I just couldn't have, uh, couldn't find a good way to hunt a place. But um, but yeah, I'm still learning a lot about that. And But uh, yeah, I got the bear spot in sock, uh, saw him on a road, a high mountain road I was driving on. Uh, got out of the car, he saw me, ran down the hill, and uh, kind of socked up there, tried to uh, see if I could see him down the hill, and he didn't, uh, I can hear him crawling around down there, but uh, couldn't get a shot or anything. So I pulled out my cow call, and because uh, this time of year they eat a lot of calves and, and whatnot. So I pulled out my cow call to see if I can call him back up the hill. Sorry about that, I'm back. Had <laughs> my son come in and ask for something. Um, anywho, I tried to call the bear back up to the road and uh, he ended up did coming back to the road. I, uh, I uh, he, popped up the road about 50 yards in front of me and uh, and just seemed to forget about me and just kept walking down the um, this uh, Forcers road. So I uh, continued to 
uh, just follow him until I can get a shot, follow him for about half a mile or, or so until he um, kind of got off the road and I got off the road and uh, he gave me a, about a 50 yard shot broadside and took it and he ran up the hill and died. So um, yeah, it was an awesome experience. My first beer, spot sock, uh, pretty intense stalking after an animal, <laughs> that big, a predator. So pretty cool. But uh, yeah, let's go into the process and uh, yeah, take you guys along. Oh man, so this just happened. Boom, nice little cinnamon boar. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was cruising down this forest service road and saw this guy off the road and stalked him for about half a mile and got about maybe 50 yards from him and got a shot on him with the rifle. He ran up the hill about 20 yards there here and passed. Oh my gosh. Nice little cinnamon bear. Pretty coat on him. Oh, nice boar. Oh, <laughs> pretty good paws on him. Oh man. Doped my first bear. <laughs> yeah, more picks to come. Nice here. I got this uh, Rocky Mountain Out Foundation uh, Outdoor Edge nice set. I usually process my game with. Got all the different kind of knives. That one's good for kind of getting your silver skin off and stuff, and uh, just general kits, doing small stuff, bone saw if I need to cut anything. And I'm just a little sharper than right there. So, yeah, we'll uh, go through and sharpen these real quick. All right, got my first rear quarter here. Um, basically just gonna go through, debone it, and get off the fat and silver skin, and tendons and stuff, and uh, what I have in that bowl there. Um, gonna probably uh, just do a, just a time lapse of this, so it's gonna be a long process. And I'm also gonna have my air conditioner running, so that uh, stays nice and cool in here, so <laughs> got it. Fortunately enough to have a air conditioner in my garage, so to keep this uh, help keep this meat nice and cool. So we'll go ahead and do that. One tip for you guys, if you're trying to get your silver skin off, is to uh, poke your knife through the point, and then when you get it through, push push up on the underside of the silver skin, move your knife back and forth as you cut it. That's that chunk right there, we'll get rid of that. We'll do here, this chunk here. So I just poke my knife kind of through it like that. And I'll almost turn the knife up a little bit and kind of pull it up and then go back and forth a little bit. And that will keep you from getting any of the meat attached to that silver skin at the bottom. You see that? There's just very, very little meat when you do that. So yeah, just thought of that tip as you, as I was going through this and I'm gonna show that for you guys that haven't discovered that yet. 
back to the time lapse. Also another tip as you uh, process that, you kind of want to separate these down the these muscle tissue line. You can see where the different muscle groups are connected by different lines. That's kind of where you want to separate the different muscle groups. See how I can cut my knife there. And we'll kind of separate it. And you'll have that whole muscle group there. The more you can do that, the, the kind of better quality pieces of meat you get and easier is to take apart but I don't know if you're going to be grinding everything it's not too important but uh, yeah it's another good tip for you if you want to do that to keep all the different kind of meat sections intact you can just uh, do that there's another line on top here a little cut for a different muscle group Kind of just take the tip of your knife and do that. You can even almost pull them away with your hand sometimes. There we go. That one muscle group was just sitting right there. You now I just got it by himself. That's a good way to get all the silver skin kind of in between each muscle layer too. Um, which I said, like again, like I said, when if you're going to be grinding, it's not too important to get everything. But uh, yeah, another tip for you guys. Back to the show. we got off the rear quarter just finished that boning out and skimming out I uh, chopped it all in uh, into cubes and stuff to put in the, in the grinder so yeah it's all one rear quarter there got another one in there two front quarters and two back straps uh, neck meat was kind of destroyed from a neck shot to kind of put it down so didn't get much neck meat but uh, yeah so we should have two bowls of this and maybe two smaller bowls or probably four bowls of the meat like this, I would imagine, with everything after we're all said and done and butchered up and everything. So we'll uh, go tackle another one. I'm gonna put this in the fridge to uh, get it chilled again and uh, we'll get on the next one. All right guys, here we go with the second rear quarter. This one all skinned up just like it did this first, the last one. And uh, yeah, we'll move on to the front quarters. Two quarters, front quarters to do, back straps, and then we'll be ready to do some grinding. Hey guys, back for round two of the meat processing. My bear here. That's a day or two later. Uh, celebrated my wife's birthday yesterday, and day before that, I was uh, uh, putting together a gazebo in her yard. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, busy on some honeydews, but, uh, yeah, the bear, me, has been, uh, cooling in the cooler over there and nice and chilled. Uh, I got two front quarters left and two back straps and we're ready to be getting grinding and making, uh, smoke sticks and patching it all up. So, uh, yeah, we'll get going. Got meat eater on the television back there. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, appropriate to uh, while I'm grinding meat here and we're processing meat. So let's do this. seen a bear backstrap before they are uh, actually pretty small probably smaller than a whitetail pretty thin as you can see uh, and I haven't even cut off finished cutting off the rest of the silver skin yet but <laughs> so get a bear unless it's a very very large one you're not gonna get much of a backstrap off of it um, and then even if you do you get a large one you're typically not gonna get a large uh, you're typically not gonna do steaks out of it because you gotta cook bear well done and a well done steak especially wild game it's probably not gonna turn out great so <laughs> uh, unfortunately this backstrap my I think this is my first backstrap that I'm gonna ever grind I'm just kind of sad but uh, but yeah I mean, you have ever never seen a backstrap before? Thought I'd show you. Yeah, pretty small, but good meat nonetheless. So I did just nick myself a little bit with a knife on my thumb here. Uh, so just in case I went and cleaned it out, put a band-aid on it and put a glove over it. Uh, bears do carry trichinosis, um, which are kind of little eggs in the, in the meat fibers that uh, you really can only get if you eat the meat without cooking it well enough. And then the stomach acid, your stomach acids release those eggs and then they, disperse in your mu muscles. So I really can't get trichinosis through a cut like this, but they, I don't know, bears do uh, carry other parasites sometimes, so it's good to just be careful if you ever nick yourself to, uh, didn't even wear gloves to start with, but I was okay not, not doing it and, until I cut myself, but <laughs> just a little tip for you guys. guys welcome back I am uh, it's a few days later and I'm starting to uh, grind the meat now uh, I went and got some about four pounds of beef fat couldn't find any pork fat but beef fat will do so uh, <clears throat> that'll be enough to get uh, with the weight of meat I, of bear meat I got it'll be about 20% fat <clears throat> to go in this so um, got another bowl of uh, meat and fat in the in the fridge cooling and then uh, I'm gonna work on grinding this got kind of a bigger grind plate there <clears throat> and then I'll probably run it through a second time with a smaller grind plate so yeah let's get to work
guys got all my fat cubed up you want to kind of cube it up so it with your cubed up meat so it all kind of grinds evenly together another tip is is to have all this stuff <clears throat> before you grind it cooled and chilled in the freezer the and as well as your meat and fat cooled the cooler you can keep that the the better chances your fat is not gonna kind of melt and render while you uh, put it through the grinder so tip for you and uh, yeah we're gonna start grinding I usually kind of take little bits of grind and take little bits of uh, fat and uh, kind of mix it through as I grind it this first time and then uh, yeah second time it all be in there and then you just grind it again so we'll get going on that Here's what our first batch looked at. Look like kind of pretty coarse, coarse ground, but uh, yeah, I got the fat in there. And I'm gonna do the second bowl of trim and fat, and uh, do the same, and then we'll grind it all for a second time. All right, guys, got. To, uh, the whole batch ground for the first time there first first pass through that is a entire probably medium-sized bear worth a bear me right there <laughs> kind of thought it'd be a lot more but uh, not a lot more but maybe a little bit more but uh, yeah what you their bears are mostly fur I found out <laughs> once you skin them and bone them and not a ton of meat on them but uh, it's uh, gonna be a treat and uh, privilege to uh, harvest and eat this bear. They're making a lot of good uh, snack sticks and ground meat for us, so it's gonna be sweet. So we're gonna pass it through second time now, and then uh, we'll be ready to make some package some ground meat and do some snack sticks. Uh, I got a pellet smoker um, with some jerky trays and stuff, and a jerky gun, and yeah. I'll show you that process as well so let's uh grind this thing again <laughs> so here's a little bit of the first bit of grain as you can see the fat is kind of way more kind of dispersed and ground up in there as opposed to that stuff is kind of more chunky so I, I did put a smaller one size smaller plate down there on the grinder as well for this second pass through so yeah looking good so far Hi guys, second pass through is complete. Does that look good or what? Some quality meat right there. <laughs> All right, on to making snack sticks and packaging this uh, ground burger up. All right, I just also just put the all the both bowls of ground meat that's been ground through twice back in the fridge to cool. Um, while I clean this stuff up, that's a good idea to, uh, once you get through the second pass through, it kind of starts to get warm again. So just to keep everything from point spoiling and the fat to, you don't want the fat to render anymore than it already has, to uh, cool that everything back down again. And then uh, once I get this stuff cooled, I'll probably package the meat 
and then uh or maybe even uh do smokies or the snack sticks and pack just meat while that stuff's cooking we'll see but uh anyhow i'm gonna get the stuff cleaned up let the meat cool and then we'll uh, go on to packaging and making the snack sticks hey guys we're back here got my mess cleaned up and got ready the vacuum sealer out my meat is chilled down again um i got this food saver um vacuum sealer using these uh one quart one liter bags i got about nine of those that should do the job i'm gonna be doing that all that for ground meat and then uh rest into snack sticks so yeah uh this is a pretty good uh food sealer i i uh use this for my moose packaging and processing my moose and a few deer and stuff so uh it's not the best one out there but uh, it's it uh, does the job and uh it's uh, fairly cheap i think i I think I even got it on like Black Ovis uh, for even on sale or something or one of those sites for on sale so it was pretty cheap so not too bad so uh, we'll uh, get packaging here and uh, we'll fill these up probably be about you know, two pound packages pound and a half or something and uh, yeah see how many uh, this gets us with that bowl of meat there back and we're starting the process with our uh, snack sticks now I got the other half of the meat uh, roughly about nine pounds eight nine pounds of uh, ground meat there um, now I got one of these uh, lamb uh, jerky guns with uh, I'm gonna be using that square tip there you can use a round tip if you want. You can even use that round tip with casings if you want. This one came with some seasoning um, and cure packet there for about five pounds. And then I also bought this one. Um, and it's Sportsman's Warehouse. Both this uh, stuff I bought at Sportsman's Warehouse. This one for sweet uh, teriyaki for up to 12 pounds. So you do want to figure out um, how much ground meat you got for uh, the amount of seasoning you got. So it, the, the seasoning is gonna be, um, will tell you how much, uh, that how many pounds that goes for, you know, so. Uh, then I got these racks. Uh, these are kind of similar to jerky racks. These are actually came from my air fryer. Um, it's basically the same thing as uh, jerky racks. Um, you can also get those uh, I also saw those at uh, Sportsman's Warehouse, or not Sportsman's Warehouse, uh, uh, what is it, uh, North 40, North 40, North 40, that's where I got those, um, but yeah, I saw these in North 40 as well, uh, any Sportsman's, Sportsman's store you can get, uh, probably Cabela's and stuff has them too, I'm sure, but uh, yeah, got my meat spread into two bowls, that way I can kind of easily mix in uh, the seasoning here uh, your seasoning should come with some uh, cure as well in cure as well cure packet included so the cure kind of helps kind of make it last longer I'm sure I'll eat these pretty quick so <laughs> not too worried about that but uh, uh, yeah we'll get uh, this mixed in I got my smoker I got a um, pellet smoker out here. Pit Boss pellet smoker. It is uh, preheating to about 200 degrees right now. Looks like it's about already there. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna get this all mixed up and then we'll uh, get the meat in the meat gun there. And uh, 
lay down the, the sticks onto these meat trays and then smoke, uh, throw them on the smoker. So let's go through it. All right, so here's uh, what comes in uh, one of these seasoning packages here. Um, does have give you directions. This is your spice packet and then that's your cure in there. Um, it will give you directions on how much to mix in, depending if you have like whole, this is if you like have big strips of jerky, uh, that's that stuff up there. Um, and then is that as well. So yeah, these are whole, whole muscle jerky here. Um, okay, yeah, this is for the a three pepper sweet and spicy. That's a different kind. This is the kind we have here. So whole like jerky and stuff, you're gonna follow that. And then uh, ground meat, which is what I got here. I got about nine pounds, eight, nine pounds. So um, I'm gonna use, uh, so instead of if you have 10 pounds, you're gonna use that whole pack, 13.6 ounce package right there. Um, but don't quite have that much. So probably gonna use, I don't know, probably like three quarter of that seasoning. And then probably like one, one full teaspoon of the cure and uh, mix that into my meat and we should be good to go. mixed in uh, one good tip for when you're mixing in your meat is um, I put like half a cup of water in each of these bowls that it helps uh, mix in the seasoning you get it all mixed in there make sure you get it all squished in there really good and mixed in there really good you want a clump of <laughs> spice in one section of it that would be not good uh, so yeah got that in there um, I got a uh, little bit of olive oil that I'm gonna on a paper towel that I'm gonna rub down these um, these grates with, and then uh, got my jerky gun there. Got the two and put that tip on there, and I'm gonna start uh, packing that with uh, meats and start spreading it out on these trays here. So uh, yeah, we'll go through that. There we go. <clears throat> Got five trays ready to go. How good do those look? Um, not even a full bowl or whatever. Did six or uh, five small trays here. So uh, a couple tips on there when you kind of squeezing the gun, lay it flat on here, and then as you're squeezing it, it'll uh, it'll kind of push you back a little bit. The pressure will kind of lay. Uh, push you back. These first ones kind of get crinkled up a little bit. So kind of once I got the hang of it again, I figured that out. So good tip for you to kind of lay them out nice and flat. So uh, yeah, we'll get these on the barbecue or smoker. Um, one one tip also is uh, you can if you don't have a smoker, you can also do these in the oven or a uh, dehydrator. So try that out if you don't have a smoker. Um, but smoker, of course, is gonna also add some nice smoky flavor to it. So yeah, we'll uh, get these on here, see how many of I fit. I'm not sure, I probably won't be able to fit these all, but <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> all right, I was able to fit four trays on there. And this is kind of the base model pellet smoker here. And uh, 
you know, let's hit on 200 degrees, probably for a couple hours. If you're doing lower, you could probably stretch it out three, four hours. Um, but I'm guessing it'll be about an hour and a half, two hours. You can kind of check it. I'll probably halfway through, I might uh, swap these lower ones up here and kind of switch them out too, since uh, the heat is kind of closer down here. Uh, but just check them every once in a while, make sure there's no like burnt ends on it or anything like that. Uh, uh, yeah, and you'll realize once it's done, you won't feel much moisture in there. I mean, although there is fat in there, so you'll get some moisture from that, but uh, uh, yeah. I'm gonna do some errands and then I'll come back and check on these. All right, well, here's where they look at, like at about an hour or so. I just swapped these trays out. Looking pretty good. I uh, just put the bottom ones up here and then the top ones down there just to swap them out a bit. But, uh, yeah, they're feeling pretty much done, almost done. But probably leaving them in there for another half hour, hour or so, and and uh, see how they look. All right, well, here is the end process, guys. <clears throat> I smoked these on 200 for two hours. And uh, so there, you can see there's little pools of the fat that kind of ran around out of them. But uh, for the most part, you know, the ends are kind of pretty well cooked. So, uh, yeah, get my package these up in Ziploc bags and uh, put them in the freezer for, uh, for hunting snacks and all that good stuff. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, um, put them down in the comments below. Uh, if anything I didn't cover, uh, not a super expert at this, but I've, I've processed all of my own animals, so... Um, yeah, learned a lot to, by doing it, so just figured I'd share what I've learned with you guys. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate it if you uh, subscribe and like and comment and all that good stuff. And uh, check you in the next video. See you guys.